Hey YouTube. Okay, so today I am on my way to clinicals. Well, not clinical, it's lab. Um, I'm on my way to lab. It's my last lab for the semester. And this is, again, still the um, transition class from LPN to RN. So today's lab is gonna be on physical assessment. Wanted to come on and talk to you guys about that because we're starting in med surge, right? So the clinical instructor wants to know, or our lab, our teacher, who's our lab um, teacher as well, she wants to know what are you gonna do when you're at the hospital and you have a patient? How are you gonna assess this patient? So for this lab, it's not gonna be in depth. You know what I mean? It's a um, head to toe assessment that you would do in clinical or at the hospital if you were a real nurse with your degree what would you do okay so that's the deal so when you're I've been watching a lot of YouTube videos um, and they're saying that you might have eight patients in med surge which they're saying is actually a lot so you might have up to eight patients and you can't do a in-depth physical assessment on these patients like you have to do like a five to ten minute head to toe okay so that's what we need to be doing um in this lab today so um i'm on my way there now when i'm done i'll let you know how it goes and Anything that I wish I would have done or anything that I messed up, any feedback I get from my instructor, I'll let you know. But um, the other thing that's coming up is the ATI. I guess it's just an assessment for the end of this class. Um, so it's only 5% of my grade. So it's not huge, it's not that big of a deal, but I'll let you know how that goes. Um, there's also like, an ATI practice exam I'm gonna be doing 70 questions you get one minute per question so for my practice exams instead of taking my time I'm gonna try and do it in under 70 minutes if there's 70 questions but um if there's not 70 questions like there is in the actual exam and whatever, however many questions that's on the practice exam, I'm gonna do one minute per question. So I don't want to get lazy with questions. I wanna like practice doing them fast and thinking through it fast because in exams um, and on NCLEX, like that's what we're gonna have to do. So there's also a practice next gen ATI so I'll let you know how those questions are different than regular ATI questions I don't know if you guys are interested in that but I'm curious to see what are the next gen questions going to be like and that's basically it for now um I will talk to you guys when I get done lab okay hey guys so I just got out of lab and it was basically easy. Um, so we had to do, like I said, we had to do a head to toe physical assessment and it was like basically to see if we're ready for clinicals and um, how we would operate. And she said, my instructor said I did okay. So basically I just started at the head and looked at their skin um, did their pupils and then I did the cranial nerve where you go like all the fields of vision and have them follow the pen with their um, with their eyes but not their head and she 
she said I didn't really even have to do that. So, I did check for accommodation and I did check the pupils. Um, I didn't have them smile or do any of that neuro stuff. And then, like, when I was on the head, I asked about dizziness. I asked about um, a sore throat. Um, looked in their mouth with my pen light. Looked up their nose with my pen light. Um, I looked in the ear with my pen light. Just, like, externally. Why not? Um, then I looked at their throat. So I asked, Does, do you have a sore throat? They said no. I asked about a cough. Um, then I listened to their chest, um, while I was on my chest, I listened to the heart, while I had my stethoscope out, I told the patient, I'm gonna, um, just listen to your stomach, I did bowel sounds, I palpated, asked for if they had pain, but I palpated after I auscultated, then I went to their arms because I don't want to go any lower. So I did their arms while they were checked their IV site while I was on the arm, checked the IV, make sure it was running, made sure it was hooked up. Um, and then I checked strength. Don't, you know, I told the patient, raise your arms, don't let me push you down, don't let me push you up. Just basically push against me, so I their strength that way. And then I was like, okay, I'm gonna just look at your legs and your feet. So I checked their heels. Um, asked if their heels hurt. After that, I checked their heels, checked their pulses, checked for edema. And after all that, I said, let's roll over, check the back. Throughout the whole assessment, I'm looking at the skin. Didn't see anything. Rolled the patient. Listened to lungs posteriorly. Um, I heard wheezing. So, I wrote that down. Let the patient know they were wheezing. Educated them on, you know, I'm going to just call the doctor. Um, I'll let you know what the doctor says. Um, why I had them on the side, I checked their skin. Checked the patient's skin. Um, so then I rolled them back and that was it. That's literally it. That's all I did. And I felt like I was, and the patient had a catheter, so I checked the catheter. Um, I don't know if I mentioned, I checked their leg strength, I checked their pedal pulses, the ones that, um, what are they called? Their cells? Fetus, the ones on the top of the foot. I didn't do posterior. Um, I did capillary refill on the hands and the toes. Um, and that's basically it. Like, don't go too in depth unless the instructor wants you to go too in depth. Like, that's just my advice. I'm not saying that's the only way to go about it, but that's a head to toe that it would be a shift assessment and the feedback I got was to go more in depth about their discharge like because the patient said like I want to go home and I was like oh that's great yeah like I, I want you to go home too like I hope that happens and I didn't want to give them false hope because you never know the twists and turns that are going to happen with um, a patient. So you don't want to say, oh yeah, definitely, you're going to get home, you're going to do this, you're going to do that, and then the next day, they took a they, they take a turn for the worse, and then they're just let down. So I didn't want to do that, but at the same time, I should have like inquired a little more about, oh, where are you from? Oh, do you live alone? Like, do you have a bunch of steps like you know things that would get them ready for discharge and thinking about getting ready for discharge and then um because in acute care they're getting out of there so you got to figure out where's the patient going and then 
it's always building up the discharge. So that's a change for me. So that's something that I need to work on. And if you're in long-term care, you probably need to work on it. Unless you're like in the rehab part of the nursing home, which I am not. So, um, yeah, I should have did more on the social side of it. Um, but that's basically like the head to toe that you need to do on, sh on the shift. And I thought I'd share that with you guys. And let me know if you have any questions. And I will let you guys know about ATI, how that is. Because um, if you're going through that, then maybe you could benefit from that. Um, if you're using ATI too. I will talk to you guys soon. Hey YouTube. Okay, what's up? So, wanted to come on real quick and tell you about ATR and something else real quick at the end. Okay, so ATR. Um, like I was saying earlier, I had a proctored exam where you have to download the extension Proctorio and then ATI will watch you while you take the exam. So you can't try and cheat or look up anything. They can monitor what you're doing on your computer. Like if you close the, um, if you try and exit out of um, full screen, they'll shut your test down. You might get disqualified or whatever. So um, that's how it was. There was a calculator on the screen and there was a pause button. So that's the deal with ATI proctored exam. Now, I was in the middle of it, right? And um, I needed scrap paper. And I there was a chat button, so I went on the chat and she was like, I can't guarantee that that's gonna be okay if you get scrap paper. So I went and got scrap paper. I put it up to the um, computer and then um, I, put it up and let them know that it was blank and this and that and that and I just used it and nothing happened nobody came back and said that wasn't allowed like you're disqualified so just ask your teacher about the scrap paper thing um so and then at the end I just ripped it just to make a point like I didn't write anything down um I don't want to write your questions down and like sell them or anything so my teacher was awesome she gave us four practice tests so the practice tests like the actual tests do not have rationales like you don't know what you got wrong there's just a focus review at the end so i suggest strongly to use your focused review and there's also a focused review quiz that you can also do so just keep going through those topics that you got something wrong in and it'll tell you you got three wrong in this topic or one wrong in this topic um so use that um and i'm trying to think like i kept doing the practice exams and i kept getting 70s like 73 then I think I got an 80 somewhere. And when I got that 80, I was like, I backed up off of studying. And because it's only worth 5% of my grade. So I was just like, well, I'm going to spend time with my family. You know what I mean? Like, I want to spend time with my family. That's more important to me. So that's what I did. And I ended up getting a 73, which was a level 2. It's not where I want to be, but hopefully it won't matter in like the at the end. I hope I won't look back and say, damn, I wish I would have studied for that practice exam. I mean that ATI exam more, you know. So that's that's basically it with the ATI. Like do your focus review, do the quiz, and do all the practice tests. The next gen questions. They were like fill in the blank, but you still had three options to fill in the blank. So it was basically like multiple choice. Like 
that's all the next gen questions were on ATI. Um, so it wasn't that serious to me. Like the next gen wasn't like, whoa, what is this? Like this is crazy hard, you know. So whatever. Also, I went today and got fit tested for my N95 for clinicals. Um so there was this lady there and I'm like, she looked a little familiar and then she had the ID badge from my college. So I was like, hello, do you work for like, do you work in the nursing program? She was happened to be the director of the nursing program, director of nursing for the nursing program. So I was like, oh, hi, like, and then I started talking to her and I was like, look, I'm like really nervous because it's a lot of material before each class to cover. Like, um, week one is like four chapters. Like, what? So, it turned out that this woman actually was an author on a textbook. So, who the better to ask than this person? Like, I just got, I feel like I got so lucky. So, I'm like, how do I cover this much information you know, this much information and this much time because mind you, two kids, house, you know, laundry to do, dishes to do, um, work full time. Both my kids are on baseball teams all year round. Clinicals. And in the seven week period is three labs. So there's weeks where Monday to Friday, I only have one day off. So it's going to be crazy. So I'm like, yo, how in the world am I going to cover this much in this much time? And she was like, most students skip over the objectives in the beginning of the chapter on the very first page. She was like, take those objectives go through the chapter and thoroughly answer the questions. If you have questions, then go into the text and read in depth. She said, know the vocabulary. If you don't have vocab, if you don't have it down, like do your flashcards, whatever. She said, look at the boxes, look at the pictures, all that stuff. She's like, there's a lot of extra, there's a lot, did she say fluff? I'll just go say it. She said, there's a lot of fluff in textbooks. She was like, I know because I wrote one. I was like, oh, well, okay. So in addition to that, I do the questions in the back of the chapter. And then like, you know what you don't know. Also, and then I said the word lecture. I'm, I said before lecture, we have like all these chapters to cover. She was like, wait a minute, there's no lecture. And she's basically saying it's going to be more of a case study in class. And she's there. It's going to be more of a back and forth discussion as opposed to the teacher sitting there lecturing you, teaching you the chapter. So you have to learn the material yourself. Then you're going to go in the class and discuss it. So if you're signing up for this fall or like from now forward, expect classes to be different than traditional classes were. It's not going to be slides behind the teacher and she's going over the slides and teaching you the material. They will be teaching, but it's more in a interactive way that they're going to do it like like i said case studies and just a back and forth discussion because that's how my first class was and it was like totally different to me i'm like this is just weird like this what kind of class is this like it was just weird to me so basically everything i wanted to say okay so get that head to toe down um and don't go too in depth, like figure out what your teacher wants because a head to toe could take an hour and a half if you got it. Like 
if you really go in depth and test each cranial nerve and percuss and palpate and osculate and you know do like you can go so in depth so let's figure out what your teacher wants before you go in there for your physical assessment because if you're in the lpn the rn class starting out they just want to see how you're going to act in clinical okay so that's basically it um if you guys watched this long thank you so much i hope it helped you if you go through the class i hope you look back and be like yeah she was right um so like and subscribe comment if you want um yeah that's it guys i will talk to you soon bye